Good morning, church. Good morning. There may just be a few, but there's quality. That there's quality right. in the house. Amen. First Sunday after Christmas, the gift of Jesus Christ has been given. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. And we're grateful. So, and don't forget now, uh, the days of Christmas, it's not, some say it's a downer here. It's not a downer. We've received the gift. And Christmas goes on through, uh, you know, the 12 days of Christmas. And then, as I say, all through life. So we're just blessed to have God's gift of Jesus. Amen. And uh, we have some opportunities for giving and for uh, worshiping and fellowshipping. Let's look at a few, please. If you look at your handout with me, I invite you to do so. Uh, every fourth Sunday, I'm so glad that we support Hobby Valley ABCCM. Another opportunity you can read about that. And I do want to say some are in the house today. We have several who volunteered help out there in many ways. Thank you so much for doing that, helping our valley folks. Uh, you can see about inclement weather. Well, we had some of that. Robert, what was your famous quote for Christmas? What? Your famous quote this morning about Christmas. Oh, it was white. It was white. Yeah, it was quiet and it was white. Yeah. <laughs> we had us a white Christmas. I, I loved it. I don't know about you, but I thought you'd think it's beautiful. Too. Um, also been uh, reminded to remind us that the January, February upper rooms devotional upper rooms are, are here for us. I hope you might avail yourself of that. Uh, I celebrate. Uh, some of our ladies delivered uh, gift baskets to First Step Farm to the 15 ladies that are there as residents. So that's awesome. And I understand, am I correct, this is from First Step Farm, a gift to our church family. Beautiful poinsettia there. So, uh, unless you say poinsettia, but anyway, whatever, that's all right. Pecan, pecan, whatever. Um, and you can see with me, please, uh, uh, well, we want to thank you as a staff, of course. I hope you know how much we appreciate you and your generosity to us. And also, you can see on the back of your handout uh, a review of our uh, financial stewardship. So thank you for, for, for that attention. So, with that being said, Christians, I invite us to worship as we share together as you remain seated. Our call to worship on this first Sunday after Christmas. Please follow on the screen in the bowl. When Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph. When Jesus is presented at the temple. I when Simeon holds Jesus in his arms. And when Anna recognizes Jesus in the temple. This very morning. And in the future we cannot see. Let us worship God. Please stand if you're able and join in singing There's a Song in the Air. <laughs> singing now, but I think we're doing it for prudence and right reasons, so thank you. I invite us to uh, pray. We can pray without ceasing, and that's what we're called to do. Christians, please let us bow reverently before God, and may this not just be a rote or routine exercise, but may our hearts reach up to God. May our voices praise Him as we lift up these prayers this morning. I pray that uh, we may be Christ-centered in our life which will fill us with joy, 
Uh, I, I pray that uh, all have had a blessed Christmas for the reason of blessing God and now to be a blessing on this earth in Jesus' name. Uh, we are grateful for uh, the faithfulness of this flock. We are grateful far beyond that for the faithfulness of God and even faith itself is a gift to us from God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us praise this morning, God, for the greatest gift ever given and received, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And I pray that we will, you and I, will take and make some intentional time in our lives to pause and to ponder and to remember what this gift is all about and why it has been given. And in that, rejoice. And God be blessed. In the midst of life, there's a uh, struggle. I don't have to tell you, but we know that. It's a part of the landscape. Uh, there is the enemy that seeks to devour us. There are uh, temptations and problems and stresses that are in our lives. You can name them before God. He wants us to. He's that kind of God that's incarnate, that is with us, God Emmanuel. He cares about us deeply and intimately. So may we bring our concerns and petitions to our Lord at such a time as this. For those struggling with COVID-19 in whatever way that is, emotionally, physically, socially, we uh, pray for those during this time and continue to pray for those who are helping us find treatments and solutions and helps for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and help all of us involved in this. <clears throat> Giving thanks for the gift of worship to not take for granted and perhaps maybe some of these days during the pandemic can remind us of what a treasure it is to gather and to worship or to worship wherever we find ourselves this day. We pray and continue to pray for those who are shut in or shut out, for those under the care of hospice, for those battling cancer and medical illness and sicknesses. Lord, continue to use the medical community and they are stressed and they are overworked and we pray for help and health and strength for those on the front lines helping us including the medical personnel and praise uh, our prayers rather for those who are experiencing what has been called a blue christmas perhaps lonely perhaps depression perhaps a lot of hurtful memories may that we all bring those to you and find healing and we need sometimes a good listening caring ear along the way may we lend that to one another and hopes and prayers for a more encouraging year ahead and that we will all be a part of the justice and mercy that God calls us to. Prayers for those um, among us that are on our minds, among them Nancy Moore's brother Perry, dealing with prostate cancer and radiation treatments coming up. Lord, help those who attend to Perry. To all others who we intercede on behalf of. Most of all, God, we thank you for your presence in our life in all ways. Help us to, to pause more often and to behold the truth, the reality that God is with us in whatever we face. May not go around circumstances, may go through the valley, but your presence is with us always. And may we never, ever forget that or take it for granted. That will get us through and beyond and more. So now, God, we thank you that you never leave us alone. You even taught us how to pray as we pray together, say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we uh, in planning worship think this is a pretty special treat for us about what is about to happen. And so we love to hear our church organ, more importantly, praising God through the musical instrument. So our, our friend uh, Sylvia Tang is on the organ. So this is not a recording. This is live and in person. And uh, just invite us uh, as we think at this time of giving thanks to God for all his gifts. I want to thank you for being a faithful congregation to this portion of Christ's uh, church and kingdom. So let's just sit and meditate and give God thanks as we listen to the church organ playing some seasonal music.
does music like that doesn't just happen. It takes practice. Let me tell you, Miss Sylvia is here practicing because staff in the church get to hear her during the week. It's a blessing to hear that. So please do that again sometime, Sylvia. And thank you for that gift in music. Sure, Thank you. Friends, uh, on this Sunday after Christmas, I invite us to consider together the Holy Word from Luke's Gospel. And this is that passage where Mary and Joseph bring Jesus, as was customary for the Jewish faith to do, to bring their child on the eighth day and present them into, to God in the temple. So this is that service for Jesus since his family uh, observed the Jewish uh, holidays and traditions in the faith. And we're beginning a reading with verse 25, Simeon's response to Jesus. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus, can you see it, in his arms and praised God. And he said, now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all people. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about Jesus. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, and some versions say, Behold, behold, this boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that generates opposition so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your innermost being too, as it did, Mary, as Jesus was crucified. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. Now she's 84 years old, a widow. She never, get that, she never left the temple area, but worshiped God with fasting and prayer night and day. And she approached at that very moment in the temple upstairs and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the Word of God, and it's for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, thank you for your Word, the written Word, and the living Word, Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel, God with us, and we celebrate that this morning, that Christmas has occurred in history, and it's never the same anymore because we're never alone. Your presence is with us. Thank you for not leaving us alone and for leaving us your word, both written and living. Now, God, help us to go deeper into that holy word that we might then go wider into your needy world for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' holy, precious name we pray. Amen. I heard a story recently about a woman who had waited until the last minute to send her Christmas cards. Anybody relate? So she rushed into a store since she'd forgotten, and she bought a package of these Christmas cards, 50 of them, without really looking at them or examining them. But she was in a big hurry, so she, in her hurry, she addressed, uh, I think it came out 49, 49 of the 50, and she signed them without reading them, just sent them all. On Christmas Day, when things, to Robert's point, quieted down some, she chanced to pick up the leftover car, the one that was left there on her end table, and she finally read the message that she had sent to 49 of her friends, and much to her dismay, it read this. This card is just to say a little gift is on the way. <laughs> yeah. oh. Suddenly she comes upon her, of course, that 49 of her friends are expecting a gift from her, and it's a gift that probably will never arrive, at least for a lot of them. Oh. I ask you something on a serious matter. Aren't you glad that God doesn't handle God's gift giving like that? Oh, I 
God promised Israel a Messiah. God promised us a Savior. And God has delivered in more ways than one through Christmas. Praise God. That's a beautiful truth. That God gave the greatest gift the world has ever known and ever received if you believe and open to it. But there's another aspect to this gift, and that's about the receiving. It's a beautiful reality that God has gifted us. The question that each of us and all of us must respond to is what is your response to God's gift that's been graciously offered? And it's easy to fly by this whole pageant of Christmas, but have, have you received this gift? Really, are you living in the light, am I, in the grace, in the guidance of this holy gift? It's a constant process, isn't it? I know there's a, there's, a, there's a beginning, yes, but there's constant giving to the Lordship. On Christmas morning, for example, if that's when you opened your gifts, you had to, I had to receive and, you know, accept that gift that was given. I mean, somebody could keep reaching out and give and give and give and give, but until you and I accepted and received and opened it, it's not your gift, my gift. Receiving graciously, I think, is one of our American Western world difficulties. Would you agree? I mean, we we reason, you know, raised in a Germanic house. We're, we're supposed to earn our own way. You know, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, be independent, uh, pay for our way. And along comes life and sin, and guess what? We can't earn our way, and we can't pay our way. And we can't be good enough, no matter how good some of you nice folks talk. It's not good enough for God's death. Behold, behold, have we truly believed and received? That word behold, I don't use that much. Do you? I mean, in conversation. Well, I'd like to sometimes with Karen, but she doesn't receive it too well. I know she wants to use it. Behold, take out the trash! Now, Behold, you, you, you know, it's like, don't miss this. It's bigger than trick. Don't miss, behold, pause. Think on this, say law in the Old Testament. Meditate on this. Give it some time. Ooh, ponder anew. Our Luke passage reminds us that because God's gift to Christ child came to us, our life can be changed forever. Forever. I can now vouch, as I bet many of you can, that when a baby when a child comes into your home, your life changes. For example, in our household, we call it BC, before children. Prior to having children, didn't know what that day, BC anyway. Somehow I never pictured myself as a young man growing up, as a bachelor, certainly. I never imagined myself changing diapers. <laughs> I tell you, it was not on my resume, and I, I had, I, not the one I filled out, but it happened when babies came our way. Or, or again, think about it, if you will, in your own context in life. Before babies Joshua and Anna entered Karen in my world, I would often sit down. Oh, I remember in the quiet of the night, I'm back to it again, and I'd read for hours. Hours, a good book, uninterrupted. No noise. Now I miss the noise. But you know what I'm saying? How a baby, how a child changes things. Little ones, tiny ones, seven-pound ones change our lives in big ways. In fact, if you'll excuse me, I found something in Scripture that supports this. It's in 1 Corinthians 15. Look it up sometime. 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, talks about this child care. And it was put on a church nursery door. You heard it? We shall not all sleep on the nursery door, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that. That's another preacher I borrowed it from. That's not a bad motto for the church nursery above the door. <laughs> we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. Now, the good Lord knows, and I pray I'm not complaining, because I treasure those years of caring for little ones in our own household, but oh my, how a little seven, eight pound bundle of joy can change your life and your schedule and your plans. Well, Dr. Luke reminds us this morning in our reading that he's not talking about just any baby. You know this. This is the Christ child. And Luke demonstrates, and he relates this specialness through the life of two people that we look at today, Simeon. If you want to put up Simeon's picture, that'd be great. Thank you for finding that, Daniel. Both of these persons' experiences had a, has a crucial message for all, a lesson for us. 
So again, Luke gives us a point to Simeon there on the screen. Luke gives us an introduction to the man Simeon. The word tells us a Simeon's character was like this. He was righteous. Talk about a, a, a character uh, resume. He was devout. He was a man of hope. And he was guided by the Holy Spirit. There's a pretty good track record. In fact, Simeon was so well guided by the Holy Spirit. He was so sensitive to the voice and to the will and speaking of God that something very specific happens here by God's design. The Spirit of God revealed to Simeon that he would not die. He would not leave this earth before he saw the Lord, the God himself in the flesh. What, an, what, a, what a message. What an awesome revelation. What an incredible promise for this elderly man who had spent his years serving God. And now God was blessing Simeon by allowing him right now in this text, as we read, to see the incarnated Christ child before Simeon died. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Behold, how wonderful it would be if every person would see the Christ, the Savior, with spiritual eyes, right, with the eyes of faith, before being placed in a casket lowered into the ground, or ashes scattered. How wonderful if everyone could behold. It's there. It's a gift offered. Dr. Luke then continues on in our passage by relating Simeon, inspired by the Holy Spirit, came into the temple. Time is everything, and God has it in control. And Mary and Joseph brought in the child Jesus to do for him the custom of the law, which involved the presentation of the child in the temple. They brought a sacrifice. They were poor, so they brought turtle doves. They didn't bring lambs. They were poor. So the elderly Simeon, now here it is. There's the picture before us. Takes baby Jesus in his arms and blesses God and says, Lord, I'm your servant. And now get the sin in here, folks. I can die in peace because you kept your promise. You fulfilled it to me. With my own eyes, I have seen what you have done to save your people. And foreign nations will also see this. And your mighty power is a light for all nations, including us. And it will bring honor to your people. Now, I've got to stop. Pause. Behold. Can you relate to this? of Simeon before us, holy and be holy, Christ child. Holy and, 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 and pausing and just trying to take it. You can't. You've been there before. We don't have moments like this all the time. But when they come, you try to take it in, and it's beyond our mind and our soul. But God is speaking to us. The very Savior, His very Savior, Simeon's in His arms. What a holy moment. And this godly old man with baby Jesus in his arms, praising God. Well, I started raising my hand, but I don't guess he raised his hands if he has a child here. But one earthly life almost at an end and another one just begun. God's life for Jesus. And Simeon is so in touch with his time. That's the thing. Be old. In touch with the time. Trying to remember what's happening by faith. Oh, we get so busy. We get so scattered. We get so distracted. And the Word calls us back to Paul. Selah. Behold. What has happened? What has happened before us? Just born to us two days ago. Well, Simeon, what a way to go. What a way to go out. Having just held and beheld the newborn Christ child in your arms. I don't believe it gets as we say any better than that. I can go now. I'm holding. I'm beholding. It's more than holding. It's behold. Pause. Consider it, my friends. Well, there are a couple of other people's experiences we better get to in this scriptural saga. So they are Mary and Joseph. While all this was going on with Simeon and Jesus, of course, the parents are standing close by. Can you put yourself in their shoes a little bit? Our text says Jesus' parents were surprised. i got to believe that's an understatement at what Simeon said. I think they were flabbergasted. I think they were blown away. They're astonished. I mean, probably standing there with their mouths again. I just imagine his parents. Maybe looking over at each other, Joseph and Mary, with expressions like, can you believe what he's saying about our son? Do you hear what he's saying? The Messiah, the Savior of the world. I know Mary's had a song before, but I'm just saying, can you try to get it in your human minds? This was big stuff, the biggest. As beautiful and as special as the Christ child baby Jesus was in the manger, please pause and behold, the crib is not the end of the story, right? 
The crib's not the end. If we leave Jesus in the crib, if we leave Christ in the crib, we've got this helpless, little dependent, reliant God. And, and, and sadly, some people, Jesus do that. You know, they, they maybe will sing the carols with you at Christmas time, but they don't know Jesus as Lord of their life. This discipleship thing, they don't really, we don't really at times behold who Jesus is. I mean, Jesus grew to manhood and died on a cross and was raised by God's power. That's the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. And as Simeon's prophecy points to we're not simply cuckooing and adoring a little child as beautiful as that is sometimes. But Jesus is Lord. Jesus will be judged. He is King of kings Amen. and Lord of lords. Therefore, he's going to right now, he does me, how about you? He offends our prejudices. He challenges our conventional attitudes and habits. God sets up standards which we can never meet, and he blows our standards wide open. We must not stop, fellow Christians, with the sentimental of Christmas. The question again for each of us and all of us, is Jesus Lord of all of my life? Behold, pardon anew. Simeon was changed because he saw more than a human baby in his arms. He saw the Messiah. He saw the light of the world. Behold, the Savior. One more, please. One more person. If we could have Anna's picture. This, this, is, this is Anna. Anna. Anna was known as a prophetess of the Lord. She was far advanced in her years. The word said 84 years old. She, at 84 years of age, she was a widow. She was a devout worshiper. Of, what we, we would call today a prayer warrior. She spent her time beholding in prayer. Uh, 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 now, a few of us here gathered here today as staff and volunteers may think that we spend a lot of time around this church. Let me tell you something. This lady didn't leave the temple doors. I'm hoping somebody brought her food and water. But anyway, worshiping, she fasted, so she didn't have a lot of food. Praying day and night, all the time in the temple. Something exciting and marvelous happened at the direction of God's almighty hands at the precise hour. Don't miss it. Timing matters. God has it in control. At the precise hour that Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to be presented in the temple. Here comes Anna. What's she doing? Praising God as she comes up from the basement. I can hear her singing praises to the Messiah of God. And she did not keep quiet about things. You couldn't shut her up. She was praising. Somebody said, somebody said, I think it's so apt, along with the shepherds, they say Anna is one of the first missionaries in history. She's heralding. She's vocalizing. It. She's praising the Savior. Behold. Look at the Savior. She's so thrilled she can't keep it to herself. Praises on her lips because this child is the hope of the world. Behold. She and Simeon saw Emmanuel, God with us. So friends, on this Sunday, just two days, just two days after the observation and the celebration of Emmanuel, God with us. Where are you in your pause? Where am I in my beholding? Because God is holding us and reaching out to hold us securely now and forever. Beholding, holding us that we might know the truth. Behold, God's Son, the Savior of the world, Emmanuel, God with us. Will you say that? Emmanuel. God with us. Let's say it again. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we praise you and pray to you for who you are. And because of it, we are at one with your Father God, our Heavenly Father, because of your coming to be one of us, that we might be one with you forever. But Lord, in this journey, we all know that we're easily distracted. We easily get off track, but you come for that very reason, to forgive us and to set us back on course. It takes, it takes a human response to a divine love initiative. You don't make us as robots or puppets. You don't force us to spend some time at your needs, but you invite us to come before your throne and bring all of our stuff. Thank you, Lord, for making a way when there was no way. Help us. 
Help us. We've got to. Our souls hunger for Paul's, for Selah, for behold. And help us to just hold some of your words in our life. And then we might behold the truth of Jesus, God, Emmanuel with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and we ask. Amen. Christians, as we remain seated, I invite us to pause as we sing. Would we? And seek to behold the gift that's been given to us. Let's just sing in reverence before God. Amen. We'll ask this side here to my right to go first with Robert's direction. 